All right, Rams at Bears is the next game that I want to talk about here. Again, Walt said this earlier in the show, like a lot of these games are toss-ups because it's tough to know which version of the team is going to show up, right? The Rams get absolutely decimated by the Arizona Cardinals two weeks ago, and then they have just a thrilling comeback win when nobody thought they had any business doing that last week against the San Francisco 49ers, even with it being a divisional familiar opponent. They're taking on a Bears team that has had its highs, but also its lows. There's not a lot of consistency right now with Chicago. What is your matchup that matters here, Carmen? It has to involve the Bears offensive line because there's been so much made about how they just aren't performing to the level that you were hoping they would, given that they were the unit that had the most continuity on offense. Otherwise, outside of the offensive line, Pretty much everything was new. You got the new coordinator. You got a rookie quarterback. Uh, you do have a new center in Coleman Shelton. And that relationship between him and Caleb Williams is still taking time to develop. What has been so surprising to me is just exactly how much they're putting on Caleb Williams right off the bat at the line of scrimmage. So he pre-snap, he's going up there. He's setting the protections. He's trying to identify certain things. And that is, I think, a little bit unfair to ask a young quarterback and a rookie quarterback to do against NFL defenses that he, quite frankly, hasn't seen before. Sure. So that's been something where I was hoping the offensive line would kind of help him out. And I, that's what, you know, kind of I thought the plan was going into the beginning parts of this season. But so far, the Bears offensive line has allowed the second most sacks this year, the second most hurries. And fifth most pressure. So it's disrupting Caleb Williams' timing. I know that he can make some quicker decisions, but he and I don't think he's being given all of the answers he needs as far as getting the ball out quickly and all that other stuff. Some of these routes concepts look a lot more slower developing than I would potentially like, given the fact that he doesn't have as much time to throw as perhaps you would want him to. Right. So I'm really hoping that this line can kind of start to figure it out. We did see them kind of pick up some stunts and 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 do some better things in the last couple of weeks. Um, but also some of these guys are just getting beat outright. Yeah. Um, and I'm looking primarily at their left tackle in Braxton Jones, who is just getting dog walked back into Caleb Williams and the, the pocket is collapsing as a result. And he's not able to even step up because the interior can't hold up their end of the bargain either. It just needs to look better. And that is what is going to determine how well the bears can run the ball, how protected Caleb Williams is. If he can get some of those more explosive plays, which he was finally able to get in this last game. Um, but at that, at that point, it just, you know, it didn't, it didn't seem to matter after he had thrown two interceptions. <laughs> Um, you know, the two touchdowns afterwards were great. The 363 yards passing were great, but it was tainted given right. the fact that they were already behind the sticks. So all that to be said, I think this all runs through the, the Bears O-line and what what the what the Atlanta or the Atlanta, the Rams defense can do against him. Um, I am hoping that having Keenan Allen back is going to also help Caleb Williams. Sure. Um, kind of round out that receiving core and give him a veteran to kind of rely on, but how effective Keenan Allen's going to be able to be coming off of injury at the H.E. is. Who knows? It just yeah. I, give, give him some time, guys. Yeah, the the idea with Keenan Allen is is you want somebody who can win with sort of savviness and win quickly, right, to give right. him those early options because, I guess, you know, you could do that with D.J. Moore and uh, and Roman Dunze in theory, but those guys are, you know, getting deep down the field. Those are the big play guys, and so I think that they would like for Keenan Allen to be that sort of player for them. So if he gets back and he's healthy, I think that will help. Hopefully Shane Waldron kind of identifies that. Um, the Just real quick, you know, the Chicago offensive line, versus the Rams defensive line is of course a big talking point because like Byron Young's played really well last week. Jared versus played really well over the last couple of yeah. weeks. Like this is a young sort of unknown defensive line. That's playing really, really well right now. So yeah. Chicago definitely has to bring in, especially with Darnell, right? Braxton Jones, who haven't had the best starts to the year at offensive tackle. My matchup that matters. I'm going to go to the Bears secondary versus the Rams receivers because the Rams are without Puka Nakua and Cooper cup. And last week, Matt Stafford was still able to get multiple catches to six different receivers. So he's not afraid to spread the wealth around, including running backs. Matt Stafford's going to put the ball where it needs to go every single time. It doesn't matter if you're the wide receiver one or you're the wide receiver four. He is not going to be afraid to put the ball where it needs to go uh, to advance the offense and to win the game. On the other side of things, the Bears corners and safeties have allowed just 30 catches, which is fourth least in the NFL, and 363 passing yards, which is ninth least in the NFL. So top 10, if not top five in both of those metrics, it's a really good secondary for Chicago. 
that's going to be big for me because I think those Chicago defensive backs are going to challenge these reserve wide receivers for the um, for the Rams in ways that the 49ers just straight up did not. And I think that Chicago secondary is playing better than San Francisco secondary is right now. So I think it's a tougher task for them. I'll go right to my plus factor though, because it kind of bounces off a little bit what you were talking about. Braden Fisk sort of coming mm-hmm. into his own a little bit, a little slow yeah. for, the, for the first couple of weeks of the season, but last week in week three, seven pressures, 12.0 passers win percentage. So he played his best game last week. And this is somebody who took him a little bit of time to kind of come into his own when he was at Florida State. And, it took, and, and then that second half of the season at Florida State, he felt like he was unblockable. I'm not going to say that he's unblockable from this point on for the Rams, but you're starting to see him get a little bit more comfortable. And I think last week you show, they showed shades of uh, him playing really well. So you throw in Jared Verse, you throw in Byron Young, you throw in Kobe Turner as well. Uh, this is a pretty formidable young defensive line to go up against that Chicago offensive line. But who's your plus factor in this one? Uh, my plus factor for the Bears is Roshan Johnson because we finally saw him get a little bit involved. I don't know why it took three weeks to even activate him. He wasn't active the first two weeks of the season. And then against the Colts, you saw that he was able to be effective in the kind of run game that the Bears like to run. When looking up kind of just, I, I couldn't really make sense of their run scheme because it kind of seemed all over the place. And looking up what they were running, I was right. I mean, there, there's really not a ton of tendencies, which probably means that guys really aren't able to get into a groove, but they are running draw 10% of the time, which leads the league. And when you think about the personnel they were trying to do that with, i.e. DeAndre Swift, he is not a halfback draw type of quarter type of running back. He is absolutely the guy that you get out into space. You do the little swing passes to, you get him to the flat, and then you let him kind of go between and, and do, do his little thing out there. Um, he was a pass catching back for you and right. why you're trying to run him up the middle. I don't really get. So that was kind of an eye opening experience for me to like, kind of look up and see the splits for all of this. They're running, uh, inside zone 20% of the time. And then outside zone 28% of the time, none of these are really huge chunks. So they're kind of spreading it out. If you're going to do that, then you're going to need a stable between the running backs. And you have a stable of running backs. So you have Roshan Johnson, who is better between the tackles. You need to get him then more involved if you're going to insist on running draw, if you're going to insist on running inside zone. These are the things that he is better at. And then leave kind of the, the spread out stuff, the outside zone stuff, to DeAndre Swift. And that's what... We saw was reported earlier this week is that the Bears are going to give a longer look to Roshan Johnson. I think a lot of people thought that meant instead of DeAndre Swift, who you paid all this money to, I do think the Bears overpaid for DeAndre Swift, but I don't think it's an either or situation when it comes down to this. I think it's the Bears want to have a diverse run scheme, which would be great if you can get it going, but you need to have multiple guys in the backfield in order to operate that because there's not really a lot of guys that are good at all of those things. And so switching it up with Roshan Johnson, running those, like those plays up the middle a little bit more, he's going to get you the hard fought yards. Please include him more in this game. (laughs) Nuance, context, strategy. I love it. That was fantastic. Because I I agree completely. Even me, when I hear, oh, okay, Roshan Johnson is going to get a little bit more. I think it's an either or thing, but I love the way that you put it. If they're able to sort of, uh, I put these guys in the best situations to succeed. Like you can have all of these players. It doesn't have to be one guy gets the lion's share just because you paid him a lot. You want the run game to be effective overall. That's why you have running backs by committee and you got some good ones there in Chicago. So I love that call out as well.